let's calculate the initial gravitational potential energy. How would we do that? Uh, the weight times the acceleration of gravity times the height. Now, would you use 11 meters or 5 meters because that's how much higher it is? You mean 4 meters? That's where 4 meters above here? Yeah. Okay, that's right. Um, actually, that, that's a good insight there. Um, what, what you're kind of getting at is that we can choose what we want to consider to be at a height of zero. We can choose what we want to be a height of zero. And what you're getting at here is our life will be simpler if we choose this point to be a height of zero. So if we choose this point to be a height of zero, yeah, so let's uh, plug into our formula. What will we plug in for m? Uh, five meters. And for g? And if this is a height of zero, what would we plug in for h? Four. That's right. OK, so that would work fine. That's right. Um, all right, so let's, uh, do you have a calculator with you? Let's figure out what that is. units, I'm not writing the units down, but we should remind ourselves of this. That means that we have to convert everything into SI units before we can use this formula. Because if we had put things, suppose we had put in the mass in grams, well then we couldn't trust that this would come out in joules. So when we're using this formula, everything has to be converted into SI units. Any, anytime we learn a new formula, we should learn whether we need to use SI units or just consistent units. Uh, well this formula, we have to use SI units or things won't come out in joules. When you're working with the kinematics equations, you just have to be consistent. But here you have to use SI units. That's 196. So now we're ready to plug in for K final. Uh, so what should we plug in for K final here? Um, 1 half mv squared, and we're trying to find v. Right. So, so what you saw there is that we can't plug in a number for v final, because that's what the question was asking us about. I should have put down. It's always good to label the question with a question mark. They're asking us for V final. But we can plug in for M. Mm -hmm. So V5 has V squared. Right. That would be our K final term. Oh, going back to the potential energy for a second, um, this illustrates that all we care about is the vertical height. Right. Notice that we, never, we don't have to figure out actually what distance we're traveling over here. That would be very complicated to figure out what this total curvy distance is. But all we really care about is the vertical distance that we've traveled. Uh, and and all, we, all that matters, again, is the net vertical distance. So we don't have to say that we went down 3, and then up 2, and down, and down 4, or whatever. All that matters is the net, uh, all, that matters, well, all that matters here is just the initial height. Um, and then what should we plug in for u final? Zero. Because of our clever use of this as the ground. So this would end up being zero. Now, you didn't have to make this the ground. If you wanted to, you could have called this the ground. And then for u initial, you would plug in a height of 11. Mm -hmm. And for u final, you would plug in a height of 7. Mm -hmm. And that would end up giving you pretty much the same thing, but it's a little bit more complicated. So it was a good, clever trick to treat this as the height of 0 instead. So that's an important thing to know about gravitational potential energy. You can pick whatever you want to be the height of 0. And you should label that in your picture so that you're consistent with that from that point on. Well, now what? Um, 2 fifths times 196 equals v squared. Good. So we can get rid of the zeros. We multiply both sides by 2 fifths. That'll cancel. Good. by itself, so we did that by taking the square root of both sides.
was your answer again? Uh, 8.9 meters per second. Right, I'll call that 8.85. And we can trust that this is going to come out in standard units because we were plugging in standard units. It's good that you thought about the units. All right, and now we've answered the question. All right, but well, this is a very typical type of problem that you're likely to continue to see. Um, There's probably something like this in the last test, but you're probably going to see some extensions of this coming up. Um, now we should stop to appreciate kind of uh, how neat or clever this is. Um, to a, a, a beginner, this would seem like a very complicated problem because we're moving down and then we're moving up and then we're moving down again. The slope here is constantly changing, but notice how conservation of energy really simplified this problem. So conservation of energy can really simplify our life. Um, what you should be doing at this point is asking what are the frameworks that you have for solving problems? Well, the first framework that you learned about was constant acceleration kinematics. Uh, I think we, we talked about, I don't know if you were around when we talked about this, but the, this framework here is writing down the five kinematics variables and then picking a, a kinematics equation. Now another framework that we have here's another framework, net force x equals max, or net force y equals may. And you're going to have to continue to use this a lot on problems uh, as well. This is another framework. And now we have a third framework, which is this. Here's our third framework for solving problems. And as we've seen in most cases, this term will drop out, and this will become the equation. So one of the things that's going to be challenging on the next midterm is deciding which framework to use. How would you have known that this was an energy problem, say, and not a force problem? Well, um, first of all, notice that Kinetic energy depends on speed. So anytime there's a problem about speed, there's a good chance that you want to use energy for that. So look for problems about speed. Notice that this equation doesn't have speed in it directly. It has force and acceleration. So this would not be nearly as helpful for solving a question about speed. So questions about speed, oftentimes this is a good approach. Also, questions about um, your vertical height. This would be a good approach because um, we know that u depends on your vertical height. So sometimes you would use this for speed or vertical height. Um, sometimes just for distance uh, moved in general, because remember that the distance that you're moving influences the work. But that, that would be a little advanced for this class, actually. So most of the time, you're going to use this for questions about speed or vertical height, because speed is in the k and the vertical height is in the u. Um, why would this have not been a great approach? I'm sorry, why would this not be a great approach here? Well, because um, the, the, the forces here are constantly changing. After all, right now, the, new, the, the normal force looks like this. But at this point, the normal force would look like this. So there really isn't any straightforward way that we could use the net force equation because the normal force here is constantly changing. So conservation of energy really made our life easier by not having to constantly uh, think about every different point. Uh, even though the normal force is changing, we know that the normal force is always going to be perpendicular to the velocity. So this term will always be zero. So that was all we needed to use this approach. Something else that happened here, I think a lot of students would split this up into three problems. First, they would figure out how fast we're going here. Then they would do a new problem, treating this as the initial point, and this as the final point. And then they would do a new problem, treating this as the initial point, and this as the final. Well, you could do it that way. That might be a fun homework problem, but th that, that could use up all the whole test right there. So another big advantage of this approach is that you can go straight from the initial point to the final point that you care about. And all these little um, all these little curly cues in the middle turned out not to matter. As long as the net work by the non-conservative forces in the middle was zero, we can take any final point we want. So we need to resist the temptation to break this up into sub-problems that we don't need to do in this case. And again, that's a big advantage of conservation of energy, that it lets us just go straight from the initial to the final point and kind of ignore all the machinations in the middle. One, uh, I don't think this gave you too much trouble. The one thing that gave you trouble here was seeing that the normal force wasn't doing work because it's perpendicular to the movement. 